the man walking me through that carjacking. He tells me he had just left the Whole Foods in East Liberty and had gotten into his car inside this parking garage when suddenly he was looking at the barrel of a gun. Somebody has a gun, you don't, you don't do anything, you get away. And that's exactly what this man did when carjacked at gunpoint just before 10 p.m. Sunday night. He's asking to keep his identity anonymous. Somebody came like kind of around, there's a pillar behind me that came around and pulled my door open. The man says he yelled at the carjacker, then spotted the gun pointing right at him. He was wearing like, you know, all black uh, hoodies and stuff, but he, he had a vest like a parking attendant or like a guy that gets carts would wear, something like that. And I just like walked off and got behind a pillar and he drove off. The suspect getting away in the man's white Audi station wagon. Shortly after, police say a cashier was robbed at the Chipotle on Freeport Road at Waterworks. Officials say the suspect put a gun to the cashier's back and demanded all of the money in the register, got it, then took off. Pittsburgh police confirmed the two crimes were connected. The man carjacked, describing the suspect as a teen or young adult. That's the problem, that there are just like guns around that this kid could just get a hold of one like because it's so easy. Oh, God. As a teen or young adult. He's an idiot. Yeah, he's a fucking moron. A teen or young adult. What kind of teen? The fucking migrant? Was he a goddamn, like, what kind of teen? What kind of young adult was it? And this guy's a fucking piece of shit, too. It would have been better if you to just shut the fuck up. It's confirmed the two crimes were connected. The man carjacked, describing the suspect as a teen or young adult. That's the problem, that there are just, like, guns around that this kid could just get a hold of one, like, because it's so easy, like... Yeah, we, we need, like, gun control. He says the loss of his car is just that, and it's replaceable. What can you hope for other than just not being injured, you know? Like, objects come and go. I was lucky, you know, so. County police are investigating a robbery at Eden Park in Robinson Township that happened this morning as well. We'll keep you updated as we learn any more details about these three crimes. We need gun control. This fucking guy, man. <laughs> God damn it, man. He deserves getting robbed. Right. What a fucking idiot. Moron. I couldn't think of a lower crime than to steal from mothers and families in the neighborhoods. Aaliyah Beaver usually locks her stroller up behind her fence when she gets back home to Bloomfield with her three young kids. But last Tuesday was the one time she didn't. It was a, a crazy day and I didn't lock it up right away. And when my husband came home to put it away, it wasn't there. Now she's without the expensive mode of transportation she uses to take her kids around her city. My daughter got a stroller. I think it's the same brand. Um, yeah, my daughter got that stroller. It's not the double one, but the one, the one for a single. Um, what is it called again? It's sitting right there. Um, uh, it's a nice stroller. It's um. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same style. My daughter got this one. They're very expensive. Very expensive. Um, we got ours. We got a deal for ours, though. Thank God. Never leave that thing anywhere. You heard me? I take that thing and I put that thing in the house. She shouldn't have never left that out there because people will steal that one. Definitely steal that one. City neighborhood. She estimates between the stroller and modifications, it's a $1,600 loss. And she isn't the only one. Sarah Stroney's was recently taken when she got home with her son and didn't bring the stroller inside immediately. Because I was trying to like get him in ready for dinner. And then, you know, next time I looked out, it was gone. This sounds like it was the one time where you didn't take the normal precaution that you... Let me tell you why. The, it's not that. It's that they live around each other. And no one ever steals your shit. People on my block, they leave their strollers out. Only reason I don't is because I'm from fucking D.C. And I got a different type of mind state. But people from this town, they leave their shit on the fucking front porch. No one ever steals shit. But you know what? As sons come around, 
on burritos and shit. Now you, it's not only that there's thieves, it's that like they don't understand people leaving shit out. They, no cap, press one. A lot of some people think if you leave your shit unattended that you don't want it. Hell yeah. <laughs> Free game. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, he must not want this shit. Oh, that she must not want this junk. Like, they can rationalize taking your shit and not feel bad. Because you ain't want it. You left that shit right here. Shit. You ain't want that shit. And, and didn't bring the stroller inside immediately. Because I was trying to like get him in ready for dinner. And then, you know, next time I looked out, it was gone. This sounds like it was the one time where you didn't take the normal precaution that you do and the worst happened. Of course, that's, that's yeah. how it goes, right? It's the time of year when people get holiday deliveries swiped. Beaver and Stroney say they know of a third mom nearby who recently had a stroller stolen. On this street in the Bloomfield neighborhood, plenty of people have things on their front porches. These bikes, for example, are locked up. But if you come just a few houses down, this stroller up here on this porch is not. Some neighbors that we spoke with say after these recent thefts, they're taking extra precautions. Beaver says police told her it's an unfortunate situation, but these moms are hoping someone comes forward so they can get their stuff back. At the very least, they want to spread the word to other parents. Even though it's chaotic and it's, you know, hectic when they're getting home, they should take that extra step and make sure they bring it in because we don't want this to happen to somebody else. Reporting in Bloomfield, Tom Garris, Pittsburgh's Action News. Oh, she got Chico. That's not the big brand. I got, that's not the brand. That... Mockingbird. That's the brand that my daughter got. The Mockingbird joint. And that's gonna be my new baby stroller too. That thing, that thing is like a fucking sturdy man. Um, Some other breaking news: plates. charges now filed after oh, a fight led to a stabbing at a local shop and save store. This is a look at the suspect: forty-one-year-old that Antonio Brown. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> this is a look at the suspect, 41-year-old Roger Freeman. Police say he and another man fought inside of the store last night, leaving broken jars, spilled food, other items in their wake. Police say it all stemmed over a disagreement about a car. The victim suffered multiple lacerations but was stable when he was taken to the hospital. Hammond is charged with aggravated assault and other offenses. This attack took place here at the back entrance of Yoshino here in Shadyside. A family friend who was working inside says the chef walked out of this door for a break when he was confronted by three masked men who had been hiding behind this dumpster. Yeah, he call for help. We hear the noise. Those cries for help could be heard inside the restaurant the victim just stepped out of. I, I was so nervous, you know. Yeah, you, everybody like, what, what's happening? What's happening? When this man ran to help, he says the chef was bleeding from his head. His wallet and his cell phone was gone, and the victim had little info for police. Because all three people wearing masks, we cannot identify the, the person, black, white, yeah, what, what kind of people how tall because you know the victim need to defend himself so uh he was act acting like this so cannot see anybody in the past nine days pittsburgh's action News Fuller has told you about now five violent attacks in the city's eastern neighborhoods armed robberies at two bloomfield businesses one in lawrenceville a man walking along a shady side street and now an employee at this shady side restaurant in the heart of the shopping district. I mean, it's definitely worrisome. Tessa Ritchie lives just around the corner from Yoshino and says this recent violence means she will keep her toddler twins inside after dark. I mean, it definitely is good to know. We terrorizing these gliders, man. <laughs> yeah, this shit ain't right, man. <laughs> hey, uh, do you, no, I'm gonna ask you a question. Do you think that we really 13% do you really think yeah, that? Like, with, I do because so? I live because because no, I live in a town where like yo, when I when I when I first started coming here, um, 10, 11 years ago, it was you know I was the only black. My my wife's father was the only other black man I saw. Her brother, I never saw any black people. We would go a lot of places, okay. and if we saw a black person, 
it was like, yo, they're going to black person. <laughs> and, and then now it's like black people everywhere in the city still only like 10 percent but okay, that's only because okay. black people be outside you know what i'm saying black people use public transportation they always hanging out outside they always walking somewhere they always you know what i'm saying just milling around so yeah. it seemed like there's a lot of black people here now but it's still like they're only 10 percent the reason why I said that is because I always see I've seen niggas everywhere. I'd be like, damn, like what the f like yeah, this is out of control. I'm telling you, it's a bunch of towns out here where I'm at. Like, it's not just the town I'm in. Every town around here was all white. Like, it's just like when you live in when you like us, you Boston, I'm DC, Baltimore, Philly. When you in places, New York City like that. You can get fooled. Press one. You can get fooled into thinking that everywhere is like that. But the best way I can describe it is on election day, presidential election, when you look at all the areas that are blue and all the areas that are red, you be like, damn, all this red in the middle and the blue on the coast and some blue down in the south. But everything else red, that's kind of like how it is, man. It's a lot of fucking places where there ain't no fucking sun turds. Now, it's a lot less than it used to be because we've moved. We started going everywhere, affordable housing. But, man, listen, man, I live in Pennsylvania, man. Sun's is coming here. They coming, don't get me wrong. But man, it's a lot of fucking gliders, man. Um, a lot of them. And they different, too. So it's like, you go to somewhere where it's a thousand gliders, and it just be quiet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> quiet, y'all. Yeah. I'm not talking about, like, silent. I'm talking about, like, just, you know what I'm saying? The volume just be turned down and shit. Yeah, it's just everybody's just on some low tempo shit. Yeah. Versus if you see the sun man and shit or sun lady. Can't go. <laughs> I'm like, God damn, that's just annoying. <laughs> Fuck. I'm yeah. like, damn. Yeah, niggas blasting jungle music and shit. <laughs> <The> jungle <laughs> music. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> It's different, man. We different, man. Oh, we we different, man. It's just it's just they like even look at the people the <laughs> that they're talking to. Like like in these stories, man. The way they talk, it's different. They just they not as emotional. Hey, how come as, you need to ask, what is what is the meaning behind moon cricket? <laughs> moon cricket. Um let me let me, let me look it up, man. Let me look it up, man. <laughs> Let me look it up, man. Um, uh, moon cricket. Um, let me see. It's in the slang dictionary. Where does moon cricket come from? The exact origin of moon crickets is obscure. One theory suggests it begins with U.S. slaves who sang as a pastime an act of community and resistance at night after their labor. Crickets are known to chirp in the evening when the moon is out. Green's Dictionary of Slang, however, only cites the term in the 1990s in prison slang. Um, okay. It says, in 2015, a basketball coach in Maine settled a lawsuit against him after he called two black players moon crickets. In 2017, the Facebook account of an Oklahoma police officer was allegedly hacked with racist posts featuring the slur moon crickets against NFL players protesting police brutality. The term is used solely in the U.S., and primarily in the southeastern states like Florida, North Carolina, Georgia, and Alabama, Tennessee. There's unfortunately a cafe in Florida called Moon Cricket Grill, which was founded in 1995. There was <laughs> they spent months in search of a name. Good thing they're the in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Play with Moon Cricket conveyed the message of 
a fun hopping place. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, it, moon crickets, man. Uh, look at these white people just going about their business, just living their life. Y'all gotta be like, y'all gotta be boys, especially when we be attacking women like Sun Man, some big able body Sun Man coming. <laughs> Beat the shit out of some white senior citizen lady. Like, no, seriously, like they gotta be mad about that. I don't care what they say. Oh, wow. It's unfortunate. Uh, the gentleman, the gentleman, uh, we hope the gentleman gets help. Uh, they, yeah, you gotta be on his side <laughs> feeling like, yo, man, fuck that nigga, man. That's very worrisome. Tessa Richard is just around the corner from Yoshino and says this recent violence means she will keep her toddler twins inside after dark. It definitely is good to know, um, just in terms of their safety, especially. And it's a shame. I wish that um, I wish that we didn't have to be quite as cautious. Yoshino is making changes too. The camera feet from the attack was broken at the time. It has now been fixed, and they say more security is on the way. We need to add more cameras. While the three men were masked during Tuesday's attack, police say they are looking for a dark-colored CRV that was parked just over there in this alley and used as a getaway car. In Shadyside, Marcy Cipriani, Pittsburgh's Action News 4. Oh, 